I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, I'm, I'm con- anybody who watches uh, CNBC knows that Indian ETF they, with the jing, 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 jing music that they play, and uh, they're always uh, so. So I'm, I'm sure that's a hot one, the hot country ETF. Anyways, <laughs> uh, now now that you've talked about this pending. ET, you, you talked about this, you said ETF explosion. Yeah. You know, I have to admit that sounds a little dramatic. C- could you talk about what you mean by this and why there seems to be this sudden interest in ETFs? Well, I think with any new investment vehicle, there, there's a uh, a period where uh, you know you got to crawl before you walk, and uh, ETFs have been around since the early '90s, actually. And initially, they were primarily uh, for uh, the uh, stock index-related funds. And, uh, you know, as time went on, uh, they had to prove themselves in the marketplace that, indeed, they were a legitimate trading vehicle, that there was enough liquidity there, that uh, people could get in and out of their trades uh, easily. And... uh, as time went on, the uh, the evidence uh, mounted that's, that suggested, yeah, the, these are indeed great trading vehicles. And uh, more and more then became available and exhibited the same uh, good characteristics of those earlier ETFs that were just primarily based on index funds. So uh, as people became at the same time disillusioned with, I'll call it the traditional investment model, buy, hold, and hope, you know, where you're always in the market 100% of the time with mutual funds, uh, that I think really accelerated the interest in ETFs because of the ETFs, as we said earlier, you can use them as a trading vehicle, trade in and out. Yeah, you have brokerage costs like you would with stocks, but you don't have the the problems and difficulties that you would trying to trade uh, in and out of mutual funds. I think that's caught a lot of people's interest understanding the power and flexibility that that these have to offer and it's just if you look at the curve on the on the number and volume of ETFs traded since the early 90s it's just going straight up now and not only in the US it uh, they're very very popular now more and more uh, around the world and they're really really interesting it it, it, just, it makes total sense okay so can you talk in more detail about the major advantages to trading ETFs and why traders should be interested in ETFs as opposed to, say, just trading the individual securities in the EDFs directly. Yeah, sure. The uh, I guess the, the most major advantage is you've got diversification uh, where with buying one ETF, let's say uh, 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 bank-related or real estate-related ETF, you're automatically buying 20 to 30 to 40, maybe 100 different uh, stocks within that ETF by just buying the one ETF. So what you do in the process is you greatly minimize stock-specific risk. And uh, here's a great example, Bear Stearns. Uh, You know, Bear Stearns here just a few days ago collapsed over the weekend from, what, about $30 a share down to, to two, three, four dollars a share. Sure. Uh, so folks that were long Bear Stearns, and you know there were a lot of them that just got long before the collapse, thinking it was a good good buy. Right. Well, they got hammered. Well, you could have bought an ETF with the financial related uh, investment firms uh, as as the underlying securities that ETF invested in, and in in so doing. Yeah, that ETF would have gone down because of the Bear Stearns drop, but not much, you know, uh, much less. So they they would have dramatically muted the risk of owning uh, those particular securities. That's just one example, and they they go on and on. And the other one, as I said earlier, is uh, compared with mutual funds, uh, ETFs, offer you the opportunity to trade in and out of the market without penalty mm-hmm. uh, as you'd experience with a mutual fund. Mm-hmm. Well, again, makes a lot of sense, but there are over 600 ETFs just in the U.S. alone. That's, that's a lot to scan through and look at. How do you narrow that list so that you're not wasting time 
shuffling through through all those charts? Yeah, that's a great question uh, and very, very important <clears throat> because I found that out of that over 600, there's probably only 120 that mm -hmm. I would consider tradable. And I use a couple of simple filters. And this is after having looked at a lot of complexity. I, you know, I always start off with, uh, you know, what are all the things I need to look at to be able to narrow this list down? But then invariably you can find a couple of just basic, simple things that, that do the, the big heavy lifting for you. And the first one is uh, a volume filter, which is very simple, that uh, for the U.S. ETFs, uh, only look at ETFs whose daily average volume over the past 50 days is greater than 300,000. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the liquidity of the underlying stocks in the ETF is also very important. Uh, but if you follow that simple rule, uh, it'll, it'll give you 90% of the time those ETFs that are worthy of consideration for a trade and then the other thing is a volatility uh, filter because even if an ETF's volume is trading high uh, it might be that the underlying stocks in the ETF uh, volume is not all that high or it might be that neither one is high and so I'm concerned about volatility so I only want to trade ETFs that uh, are uh, behaving in a deliberate fashion where the price is in a deliberate fashion so I use a here's a little bit more complex filter but if you think about it pretty easy I just take the highest high of the last 30 days mm -hmm. subtract the lowest low of the last 30 days divided by the close of today and that's got to be less than 15 percent or 0 0.15 and if it is then the volatility is sufficiently low where I can consider looking at a low risk, uh, high profit or high probability trade opportunity. Mm. So those two filters together, zap with a push of a button, mm. uh, get me right down to what I should be looking at. Yeah, that's a great technique. What I like about it is that any any good charting software should be able to scan for those pretty easily. So. Um, I, I like that. Now, I know you're a big fan of swing trading. So with that in mind, how long on the average should a trader expect to stay in an ETF? Yeah, once I get down, my list down to the, the 120 or so that I would consider trading, uh, yeah, then I, I want to swing trade them because uh, I found that uh, being in a swing trade, I can get the biggest bang for the buck in the shortest period of time. And what is that time frame? It's usually one to five weeks in a trade, in and out of a trade. Uh, the, uh, the, the opportunity there is when you, when you trade that way is you can really be picky, picky, picky and wait for the best of the best opportunities. When they occur, you strike and you get in, you, you stay there as long as you need to, to, to capture whatever the market has to offer, and then you get out. And then you just wait for the next, you know, for the next opportunity.